What does it mean to live with a star? Well, let me explain. I have here in my hands a single grain of salt. You may just have to take my word for that. Imagine this is us, our entire world. To represent our sun to scale, I'd have to put an orange all the way at the back of this room, over 30 feet away. What's in between is space. Tonight, I want to take you into space and show you that although it is absolutely vast, it's not empty, that there's actually weather in space. And this weather comes from the fact that we live with a star, the sun. Our roommate, the sun, provides everything we need to sustain life. Our living arrangement even produces some of the most stunningly beautiful displays in the entire solar system, like these, the northern lights, these shimmering blues and reds and purples and greens literally dance across the night sky. But it's not all good. Our roommate's actually pretty fussy, borderline bipolar, if we're being honest. And the weather that our roommate creates can be both life-sustaining as well as life-threatening. I remember the first time I heard that there was weather in space. It was four years ago, my first year of graduate school. And at the time, I was just a space nerd, fascinated with Hubble telescope and shuttle launches. I know. <laughs> but in class one day, my professor told me about the Carrington event. This event was named for Richard C. Carrington, just an amateur astronomer whose favorite pastime was to look through his telescope and sketch features of the solar surface. I know, right? Don't we all? <laughs> but one day, September 1st, 1859, Carrington witnessed a brilliant burst of light. He didn't realize it at the time, but this would be the single greatest eruption on record to ever impact the Earth. The energy from Carrington's event draped our planet in some of the most beautiful northern lights the world had ever seen, spreading as far south as Cuba, People were on the streets in Boston at midnight, reading their newspaper by the light of them. Hikers in the Rocky Mountains awoke to them and started making breakfast, thinking that it was dawn. Carrington's event also wreaked havoc on the communications of the day, the telegraph. Induced currents in the wires were so strong they literally shot sparks from the ends. They caught fire to telegraph offices. So, in a way, Carrington made the connection between the sun and us. But what is space weather actually? To answer that question, we need to look at the sun. When's the last time you went outside and looked at the sun? I mean, really stared. <laughs> right, this is a terrible idea. But it's just this great constant ball of fire in the sky, right? Oddly enough, really the only relatively constant thing about the sun is what we see every day. Sunshine. But let's take a closer look, shall we? I want to show you how the sun actually causes space weather. The Solar Dynamics Observatory is a satellite that sits in space between us and our roommate, constantly taking pictures of the sun. This satellite can see the sun in all kinds of different lenses that show us things we'd otherwise never see. What we can do is take all these images and stitch them together and create a time lapse of the sun over the course of years and through all these different lenses. And when we do that, what it shows us is that the sun is a spinning ball of enormous power and it's constantly changing. We see short, quick bursts of activity, regions of activity appearing and disappearing. It's hard to believe that this is the same shining ball we see in the sky every day, isn't it? But let's take a step back and think about some of the science going on here. And to do that, I just want to freeze and zoom in on a picture from this movie. Here, 
The satellite is showing us the sun through ultraviolet and X-ray lenses. We can actually see the magnetic field lines because the plasma flowing along them lights them up. These magnetic field lines are what gives the sun its power and what allows it to actually cause space weather. Sometimes, our roommate can throw some pretty serious temper tantrums. These episodes become the natural disasters of space weather, but they're not like any natural disaster you've heard of. There are basically two forms of space weather natural disaster, solar flares and coronal mass ejections. If you look at the edge of the same picture, you can see a solar flare erupting from the sun. These flares are explosions of radiation, reaching millions of degrees in temperature and are the equivalent of 100 megaton hydrogen bombs going off at once. All of this energy travels to Earth in just eight minutes. These flares are also natural particle accelerators, shooting millions of particles out into space at close to the speed of light. You wouldn't want to be in the way of these, but the Earth often is. The second form of space weather natural disaster is a coronal mass ejection, or a CME. Coronal mass ejections occur when the magnetic field on the sun becomes so contorted it literally snaps, like a twisted up rubber band, shooting a cloud of gas out into space at millions of miles per hour and weighing as much as Mount Everest. But what does a CME actually look like? Well, these are basically clouds of material that blow up off of the sun, sending a magnetic shock wave out into space. If Earth is in the way, a spectacular clash of forces occurs. When the cloud hits the sphere around us created by our magnetic field, our field changes, and the energy that gets inside is dumped into our atmosphere. This is where the northern lights come from. But also, because of our space-faring lifestyle and technological dependence, there's much more at stake. So now that you've seen how the sun and how it's changing actually causes space weather, why should we care? Well, on July 23rd, 2012, our roommate went off crazier than usual and produced a Carrington-sized event. This event missed us by one week. In other words, the spot on the sun that caused it had rotated just past the Earth before blowing off. Had it hit, results would have been devastating. The National Academy of Sciences estimates that in the first year alone, the economic impact would have been $2 trillion. That's 20 Hurricane Katrinas. Why would it have been so bad? Well, the radiation would have knocked out much of our satellite communications and GPS. This is bad news for those of you who like to use your credit card since every time you swipe is a satellite transaction, you would have had trouble paying for a gallon of gas. Energetic particles would have rendered billion dollar satellites dead in the sky. The energy from the CME cloud would have induced currents in our electrical grid on Earth. And an event of this size would have been too much for our unprepared grid and would have led to blackouts for tens of millions of people. We don't do well without power. Our lives are completely dependent on things that plug into the wall. Conservative estimates say it would have taken years to get power turned back on for everyone. Imagine having to live for years without power. We would literally still be picking up the pieces. Well, we're screwed, and that's what I have for you guys. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> No, we're not screwed. <laughs> and the real question we should be asking ourselves is, what can we do about this? Luckily for you, we have a plan. Call it a scientific couples counseling for a roommate and us. The first step is to study the physics. We now have instruments on Earth and in space studying every part of our interaction with the sun 24-7. We already saw some of the mind-boggling images that the Solar Dynamics Observatory sends back of our roommate. 
And it's only one piece of an entire fleet of space weather observing satellites, constantly observing the sun. We actually just launched another one, Discover. And it's on its way out into deep space now. You can think of this fleet as our own personal Twitter feed, constantly updating us on the sun. Hashtag crazy roommate. <laughs> Our job as physicists are to take these observations and understand space weather to the point of prediction. Imagine your local weatherman reporting, grab your rain jackets because tomorrow there's an 80% chance of rain with a high of 38 degrees. And you may want to put your satellites in safe mode because there's a 60% chance of solar flares with lots of particles expected. And for those of you north of Seattle, you may want to turn an eye skyward since some brilliant northern lights are likely. These are the kind of predictions we can create with enough understanding of space weather. But we aren't there now. Our space weather forecasts are where our regular weather forecasts were 50 years ago. We're working on that too. We created the Space Weather Prediction Center to fix this. They take all of the data from our space weather fleet, combine it with everything we know about space weather, to create forecasts, even industry-specific alerts. There are now tens of thousands of individuals and businesses who subscribe to these alerts, all people who realize that space weather affects their business or their well-being. The second step in our plan is engineering. With enough understanding of space weather, we can better design our systems, know when to turn them off and protect them, or to take other mitigative action. If we could tell our electrical engineers just what to expect from space weather, they could guarantee the safety of our grids. Or maybe for those of us hoping to go to Mars someday, or just to take a ride into space, I'm sure we'll be much more comfortable knowing that our spaceship is designed to protect us from space weather. I've come a long way since that day in class four years ago, not knowing that weather even existed in space, much less how it affected me. But then I heard about the Carrington event, and I learned of the importance of space weather, and I decided to make that my focus of study and my life's work. Hopefully, as we continue to learn more about our roommate, we can better forecast space weather so that we can learn to live in harmony with our star, our unpredictable, powerful, and beautiful roommate, the sun. Thank you.